This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Deep South Dining is the show all about the culture of Southern flavor. From fried chicken and collard greens to shrimp and grits and a glass of sweet tea. Subscribe now to the podcast using any podcast app or download our MPB public media app. Okie dokie folks, welcome back. Horticulture's fell to rushing and uh, we want to just talk about gardening today. Just whatever's on your gardening mind. Uh, I know there's a, it's really too late to do some stuff. A little bit early for doing some stuff, too hot to do some stuff, uh, just right. And uh, there's a lot of frustrations out there about to shift gears here. Uh, <clears throat> Java, I don't know if you've ever heard of this this concept called a thin place. Thin place. Now, that's a new one right there. What's that? That's, that's a new one. I don't think I've heard that one before. It's an, it's an old uh, Irish Scottish uh, concept where... You know, it's, you find yourself in a, a place that's timeless. It's not there. It's not here. It's like walking across a door, going through a gate, or, uh, or or in this case, this week, it changed from summer to fall. Okay, well, we didn't notice it. We're not going to notice it. But we had the date, you know. We said, this is the day it changes from summer to fall. And everybody sort of pauses and, and, and thinks about it. It pulls us together on a concept. It's not summer. It's not fall. But, you know. And that's what they call a, a thin space. Some a people, thin space. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's sort of like, uh, you know, you hug somebody you haven't seen in a long time, you know, and that's not something you do all the time, but it connects a lot of stuff and then it's gone. And that's a little connection thing, a little thin space. Anyway, that's 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 what this weather is right now. It's too hot to do stuff. It's going to be cold soon. And I get emails all the time from folks wanting to plant pumpkins. Way, way too late for pumpkins. July. July is when you plant pumpkins. Well, I'm going to plant them anyway. And I'm thinking, okay, <laughs> whatever. Go for it. Uh, be prepared to cover them up. But uh, th- th- uh, this week, I went out and planted some lettuces. Matter of fact, I've got a, a picture. It doesn't look like much because they just started coming up good. But I got a big pot, and I got some red lettuce. I've got some green lettuce. I got curly lettuce. I got frilly stuff. I got skinny. got, bro- you know, some that's got street. And it's, I put them in a pot. I stuck some garlic cloves down in between it. They'll be coming up in another uh, few weeks. And uh, I'm going to tuck, as soon as they start coming in at the garden centers, I'm going to start tucking a few pansies here around the edge. It's going to be a pretty pot full of stuff, a lot of color, a lot of texture. It'll take cold weather in Java. I can eat it when I'm tired of looking at it. You have a bouquet of of lettuce yes, <laughs> this yes, morning. Yes, yes. Uh, actually, there's another word. It's called a mescloon. Of lettuce. Wow, okay, fancy. M E S C L U N. It means a mixed. So, you know, if you grow a whole bunch of mixed salads together, and that's what I do. I, I take uh, th- four or five different kinds of lettuces, different shaped leaves and stuff and colors, and I mix them together and I put just little pinches of those here and there, and they grow up as a tidy little mixed salad, little mescaloon, Mississippi mescaloon. Sound like another brand. <laughs> anyway, this, this thing about uh, about the thin space is, uh, you know, when I pull all my, my zinnias and my pea vines and stuff like that down, it's t- it goes from being a real full, good-looking, colorful, textured butterfly garden to just bare. But then I immediately plant some more stuff, and in my mind, I see what it's going to look like in a month. And that's my little thin space. I get out digging in the dirt. Uh, turning stuff over, shifting things, you know, you're ending up this season, starting a new season. It just gives me pause, and that's what the whole idea of a thin thin place is, a little pause. But anyway, we're going to be talking about gardening, and we're going to start out right off the bat talking with Louise down in Mobile, Alabama. Good morning, Louise. How are you? Good morning, Mr. Rushing. I am just fine, and I'm so proud I'm the first one. <laughs> you are. Yeah, top, top, top of the front of the queue. Yeah. Um i tell you my, my problem first, and then i ask you about your lettuces. I just recently relocated some pavers that walk from my deck to my shop. Right. And that left some bare spots in my grass. Mm-hmm. What is the best way to fill those with more grass? What kind of grass do you have? Do you have St. Augustine or something? I think it's St. Augustine. Well, one of the things is, you know, it's it's really kind of late in the season for for trying to get grass started because it takes it takes a good, you know, you could probably do it in Mobile. It takes a good month for grass to get established, you know. And and, and I'm setting this up, you know, for other people listening. When you plant grass, what you plant 
today will not be there a month from now. It will have replaced itself. New runners, new leaves, new roots. And so if you wanted to plant some stuff, the idea is plant it so that it can reproduce itself within about a month. And then it'll be like it's been there forever. So if you could get some, some little squares of grass or uh, some even some little runners and, and go out there and plant them and then you know take care of water them a little bit, tiny little bit of fertilizer, not too much fertilizer, not too much water. And what you plant this week will start to spread within within two weeks. And then within an, another couple of weeks, it will be its own plant as if it's been there forever. Doesn't know it hadn't been there forever. See, well, so you're you're not saying seeds. I'm supposed to get no, some no. You, you can't get St. Augustine seed. You're gonna need to to to. Have, have you got a pretty good size yard? Yes. Go ahead. You know, just just dig some little squares uh, out in your yard here and there. You know, oh. and it'll, it'll, they'll fill back in. And then instead of putting them on top of the ground, kind of work that ground up a little bit, like you're gonna plant something, and then plant it where it's level with the ground. In other words, don't just lay it on top of some bare dirt. Kind of work the dirt up a little bit, and Plant it where it's level with the ground like it would normally grow. And then, then just water it a few times, you know, a couple of good times uh, a, a week. And, uh, and it should fill in pretty quickly. Should I put some potting soil there first? No, it's, yep. it's, it's going to have to get used to whatever dirt it's growing in. But like I say, if you, you know, if you could just lightly work it up a little bit. And, uh, and in between, you know, if, if you want to temporarily put something out there, a little mulch or something, it'll look funny, but it'll look like, you know, that you're doing it on purpose. And that'll oh. that'll keep the ground from getting all packy and hard until the grass has a chance to send runners out and start rooting in it. it you only have about oh, n- another month and a half or so, you know, to pull this off before winter. So I'd go ahead and get on it as soon as possible. But just get your little squares of grass, maybe three or four inches, five inches square. And where you dig it up from out in the yard, it'll fill back in. That was going to be my next question. How big a piece do I need to dig up? <laughs> Well, I started my my horticulture career. One of the first jobs that I was given to where I actually had to sit down and do something to to produce something was rooting St. Augustine. And I was taking individual little runners, each, you know, those runners got little plants every every couple of three inches and cutting those up into individual plants and potting them up and growing them. So you can do it with one piece of grass. But if you get something three or four or five inches across, it's going to look better. It's going to get established better, and it'll just fill in faster. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, four or five inches. Okay, I'll know what to do now. Thank you very much. I want to ask about your lettuce in the pot. Uh-huh. When you harvest it, there's no heads of lettuce coming from that, right? You just... I, I don't really grow head lettuce. I grow, you know, like loose leaf stuff, you know, and uh, and there's a whole bunch of different kinds. There's some that, that make heads, but what I do is I is I plant them out there, and I just take scissors out, and I go out and just snip the leaf because I don't need a lot of salad at one time. And uh, I could cut the whole thing off and let it sprout back out, but usually I just go out and snip individual leaves that, that, uh, that, and, and leave some of it. But I don't, I don't grow the, 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 the head-type lettuce. I grow the loose-leaf stuff. And you get those at Walmart and stuff? Yeah, you can get it at Walmart. A lot of garden centers carry it. You can just get a package, uh, two or three different, a pack, uh, different kinds of, of lettuce and, and just put little pinches of them in a pot, and they'll all grow. They grow real quick. And, but not seeds. Seeds, yep. Actually, yeah. seeds. Yeah. Oh. Okay. And, they, and they come up quick. This is the way it's been done for ten thousand years. Before you know, and, but they, you know, garden centers do have already growing plants. But each one of those plants costs what a whole salad would cost. See, so what I would do is I would get some pansies and put them out there and just sprinkle really, really thinly some seeds, lettuce seeds around, and they'll come up within just a few days, and within three or four weeks, you're gonna be eating on it. I grew up in Europe, and I eat the pansies, too. Yeah, yeah. I have a whole pot full of edible edible stuff. I've got chives, parsley, different kinds of lettuces. Uh, I, I go with the violas because the little violas, they don't stick to the roof of my mouth like pansy leaves, uh, pansy flowers do. <laughs> okay, I kept you long enough. Thank you so much. I know what to do now. Uh, Re- Louise, call any time. Good to talk to you. Thank you. Bye-bye. All righty. Yeah, I feel smart.
I feel like I'm doing something. <laughs> I think Louise and the seeds were just blowing her mind. She was <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was in. Uh, I, I go around and visit garden centers, see when they're and they're starting to get stuff in. Finally, starting to get stuff. The past couple of weeks or so, you know, some have already had things, but the pansies are starting to show up. But the, a lot of them have got little flats of different kinds of lettuces. You know, they're a little bit pricey, but they're pretty. <clears throat> and the important thing is, they look good in a pot in the winter. If it's going to freeze, going to get down to 15 degrees, drag it in. And when it gets back above hard freeze, put it back out. Because lettuces and uh, garlic, you know, you can plant garlic this time of year, parsley, pansies. They love cold weather and they look good. They, and, they, they, and, and they make you feel smart. So anyway, there's some events going on this weekend in Jackson, right next to the uh, Agriculture Museum on Lakeland Drive is a, is a park where they're having Wells Fest. Be sure to stop by and see my friend Lloyd Moncrief, who spent all year growing heirloom plants, indoors and out, precious heirlooms you can't buy anywhere else. And uh, they're, they're what I call garden club lady plants. It's stuff that they all grow because they share it with each other. They're good plants, and they're easy to propagate. Anyway, say hey to, to Lloyd. I'm also driving my truck down to Petal, Mississippi. Uh, Hattiesburg is a suburb of Petal, if you're not sure where Petal is. I'm going to be down there tomorrow morning, Saturday, on the back of my truck, showing lettuce in pots and the stuff I grow in the back of my pickup truck. And we'll be talking about that, but... Um, I just learned about uh, Java from a, a fellow at a pub, of all places, uh, about a woman named Jane C. Luden, L-O-U-D-O-N, uh, back in the 1800s, who wrote the first home gardening manual. There are a lot of horticulture stuff in the 1700s, 1800s, but she wrote the first home gardening how-to book. And i gotta, I got to find out more information, but Jane C. Luden, L-O-U-D-O-N, I want to find out a little bit about that. I guess what I guess what would separate it from the I guess not so much of a scientific approach, but yeah. more just you know. Yeah, most most uh, most horticulture and 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 manuals are production oriented. How to get the most? Here's the best way to do. Here's the best things to do. Here's the best way to do it. Here's the most efficient. Blah blah blah. And it's about production oriented. But there's not many people, and, and I'm one of these people who just writes about knocking around the yard. Just knocking around, you know, my tomatoes may never turn red or the birds or squirrels may get them, but I take a Sharpie pen out there and draw smiley faces on them. You know, that's not horticulture, but it it connects me with my garden. It keeps me uh, uh, involved and I notice things, you know, and so it's just so gardening is more the journey, whereas horticulture is the destination. I like that kind of more of the joy, just the simple joy of gardening. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. let's make sure we have uh, an entire row well, or you, a patch of something. Yeah, you 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 took you took little Java to the football game last week. Yeah, he, he didn't last long because it was hot. <laughs> it was hot, and that sonic boom is loud, you know. And he just could. But you took him out there, and you know, and that's what you do. You don't wait till you're old and wish you'd done stuff like that. You savor the little moments. That's true because we got some good pictures <laughs> during the tailgate, and we ate on the de- on the back of a uh, Mr. C's truck, and but. Before the first quarter, we were gone. <laughs> well, and that's the way gardening is. Horticulture is raising them to be adults and get out of the house. Yeah. G- gardening is saving them, taking them. You know, get, when mama's not looking, get them a donut. <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. So uh, anyway, we got some calls. I, you got three. I don't know which one to go to first. I got a plethora of choices here. Um, let's go with uh, James in Hendersonville. Hendersonville. James, what's going on up in the north part of the, of the south? Um, actually, everything's good today. Last night it was about 55 degrees, mm-hmm. so it was nice and cool. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even have to have my uh, window unit air conditioners on at night, so <laughs> it was cool, nice and quiet. Life is so, good. Uh, it's beautiful. Life, yeah, life is, is good. good. Um, I live on the same piece of property, two and a half acres, but I moved from one house to another. Um, and there's a, my grandmother's rose bush uh-huh. and some irises. And some lilies and some high uh, hyacinths. No, uh, anyway, they're the big. Uh, they have in the springtime. They have um, the flowers come up. And they're like light purple um, hyacinths. Yeah, so I can't forget what they are. Oh, okay. Are they are uh, they anyways, are they really like a garish, uh, not purple, not magenta, but an eye poking kind of color? Would um, would, yeah, would, it, would it be hardy yeah. gladiolus? Gladiolus, uh, no. 
uh, I'm not sure, but they, uh, I think what happens in the fall and the fall and the winter they they die down. Yeah. So I know that's the time of year that I can cha- uh, transfer them, right? Yeah. Um, most. Okay, cool. Um, so the rose bush. I know I've listened to your show for a thousand times, and I love your show. But so it's okay now for this uh, like a fall time to move those things that were usually bloom in the spring yeah it, it is a good time here here's the problem though when you move a plant you leave a lot of the important roots you know the feeder roots are way out there you leave most of those behind and it's not a problem because the plants can grow new ones but if you don't prune them back then they then that all the new growth in the spring starts sucking on roots that aren't there see so when you're moving something yeah. it's a good idea to prune it with spring bloomers you know you want to wait till after they bloom you know, but you still need to prune them. It just our, our our hearts get soft. We can't. We don't want to cut that plant and all that because it looks good. Yeah. But if you don't, then by the summertime they really start to suffer. So if you're going to move them in the fall, go ahead and dig the hole first, and I bet that'll cool your jets for a while. I think if you dig the holes first, <laughs> then you know you'll 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 you know wait a little bit longer. Um, but be sure to go back after they bloom in the spring and prune them back. You know, if you don't, the plant's going to suffer. So you just got to be, you got to discipline them a little bit. Makes them feel better. Okay, cool. Okay, thank you very much for your show. Uh, uh, um, I love listening to you. Uh, well, have a great rest of the day. Thanks for being part of it, man. See you, James. Okay, now let's go to uh, Columbus. Robert, when you say resurrection plants, me and Java are talking about garden club lady plants. What is? What do you call a resurrection plant? Well, it may be a resurrection fern. That might be the better name. The ones that are up in the trees on the limbs and all? Yeah. You mentioned, I think, a couple of weeks ago that you had a log with with them on it. Yeah. Uh, I've just moved up from New Orleans to Columbus, and I down in New Orleans, you got them on all the trees and the avenues, and the trucks come along and knock out a branch now and then, and you get this beautiful you know, garden of resurrection right. fern, I'll call it the right name. And I bought up, brought up a big log up here to Columbus, and all my neighbors shake their head. Oh, it's dead! It's dead! It's dead! No, sweet first rain, it'll be beautiful again. <laughs> or just hit but it with a I, hose. Yeah. Well, actually, I thought now, now it's interesting because my hose water doesn't work as well as the rainwater sometimes. No, it, it, it does. Do, you're right about that, but it does work. Yeah. Well, here's a question. I'd like. I have three oak trees on my property up here, and I would like to introduce those uh, as plants on those trees. So how do I get them off the log and into the tree? Is there a well, they, they don't trip? have they, no, they don't have roots uh, per se, you know. So what you do is you just get your sharp knife or something and just peel off some of the bark that the roots are tied up in, you know. In other words, just sort of slice off that layer of 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 bark and move the whole things, you know. If you want to get you some gorilla glue or something like that to hold it in place, they'll take it from there. Oh. Huh. You know, a little little nail, a little nail, or something. You know, something. I wouldn't put wouldn't wire it on because the wire is going to cut into the tree eventually. But you know, any way you can attach it up there. Uh, but just you know, just pull out. You know, you can take a good sharp knife and just sort of like like uh, it's like peeling a carrot. You know, just take okay. that peel off and it's got the and, and then just attach. Put them on the top, and uh, you might notice that they don't. You know, if you if you notice, they grow on certain sides of the trees and not others. And that has to do with winter sunshine more than anything. All right. I know they can't grow the lateral. They don't grow in the uprights too much. No, no. I, 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 I see them growing straight up in cracks in bark, straight up trunks. You know, they, oh, yeah. they they don't care. You know, as long as they can hang on, you know, they'll do fine. And there's no reason why that this is too far north for them or anything of that sort. No. Heck no. I'm, I'm not used to being a, a Yankee here, you know. I'm, I'm <laughs> from down south and... Come up here, and things are different. It's cool outside ferns. Yeah, well, it is right now. But anyway, no, these 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 ferns they grow way on. I don't know how far north they go, but they grow throughout the southeast. One, no. one other related issue is uh, I'd like to also maybe throw some uh, Spanish moss up in those trees. You think that would take? Uh, yeah, it will. But here's the deal with Spanish moss: it doesn't grow up. What you plant grows down. And so you need to put it up high enough that it can grow down. And if you if you hang it as high as you can reach, that's as high as it's ever going to get. So ball it up with a with a piece of string, a little rock or something, and then throw it as high as you can. And and where it catches <laughs> up. And, and I mean, I, I grow Spanish moss 
as an ornamental plant in my backyard. I got a little area with with uh, old stumps and a little water garden, and uh, and I put a framework of some you know what rebar is. Uh, just some yeah. some metal rebar. I put some hay balloons up there, and I tied tree trunks to it so it looks like a, a little forest. And I just crisscrossed it with some real thin rebar, and I just throw the stuff on. And from time to time, I just the part that hangs down, I'll just take some and throw it back up again. Right. Well, that's, that's and, 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 and also, if you don't put enough of it out there, birds are going to take it away to make nests, which is kind of cool because their nests become Spanish moss. <laughs> Well, I thought maybe that's how it actually spread, at least going up the tree. Maybe the birds took it up there. Yeah. Yep. And also they make little seeds, tiny little seed pods. Uh-huh. Well, that's good news. Thank you so much. I appreciate your information. Oh, I want to throw out one other thing. If you like the Spanish moss idea, now this, a lot of people are going to th- they're going to think less of me, but my ego, my horticulture ego is intact. My garden's been in Southern Living and Home and Garden TV and all like that, but I use uh, some artificial Spanish moss here and there. You get it to Hobby Lobby, it's kind of a funny looking, not gray, not green. So I hit it with some gray spray paint, and nobody knows but you and me. Wow, I never I, thought of that. I, I'm real serious I, about this, real serious. You know, you put it out there, and that way it keeps your spirits going while the other stuff. But I've got an area where there's no rainfall, it's up under, a, 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 up under a, my, my porch. And I got a mirror, uh-huh. and I got some old driftwood and stuff like that, and I just needed something that looked old south. So I got me some artificial Spanish moss, hit it with a little gray spray paint to, to make it, you know, look more. And I put, and nobody knows but us. Ah, that's interesting. Yeah, and, of and, you know. and anybody listening who thinks that that's cheating, I hope they didn't put on eyeshadow this morning. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Fake well is fake. Said. Well said. <laughs> anyway, good luck on it, Robert. Thank you so much. All righty. Okay, let's go to Flowood. Hey, Mike, how are you this morning? Flowood, Mississippi. Well, I'm good. Good, good morning. Uh, I, I, we watch MPB um, shows a lot, and they're in, filmed in England, and they have these big, beautiful hedges. Yeah. Is there any kind of plant that we can plant here to create that kind of hedge. I know they require pruning, but... Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. We, we have a whole bunch... Of, a lot of the hedge plants that I see in England, and you know, I'm, I'm in England a pretty good bit, a lot of the hedge plants that grow there grow in Mississippi. You know, they grow red tip fatinias, they grow ligustrum, they grow privet, uh, they have um, uh, hollies, you know. It, the difference is, instead of growing a solid wall of one kind, a lot of times they'll mix things up. They'll have two or three different kinds of plants, sort of all together, so you'll have green and and a burgundy and a different kind of green. Uh, so, but any of the hedge plants we do here will do fine if you can help them grow good roots. They'll grow a good, thick, sturdy hedge. That just means digging a wide hole and uh, loosening up the roots and choosing a good plant that's not going to get too big. And some of our our plants we grow as hedges, they're not really hedges; they're small trees, and you got to prune. So you just choose a plant according to what kind of look you want, but also what kind of maintenance you're going to give it. But this there's no problem growing hedges here. We have a we have a lot of clay in mm-hmm. some of our areas, and yeah. um, I, I guess we need to make sure it drains adequately. Or yeah, that that, that or or when you when you work the soil up, if if you'll if you'll dig it a good you know maybe. You know, get, till it up really, really good. And where you, when you plant individual plants, take a shovel and loosen the dirt in in that hole a little bit more in a shovel deep. In other words, right beneath the plant, and dig a nice wide hole. If you'll just add a little bark or something to the soil, it fluffs it up, and 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 that's plenty. Just you can actually plant these plants a little on the high side, two or three inches higher than the soil around it, to allow for settling, and uh, and they'll they'll do fine as long as it doesn't have standing water. Uh, now there's some plants that will get root rot if you you know if if in heavy clay soil if you don't raise it up a little bit, uh, and there's also some real popular plants that are fast growing that are not good in the long run. You know a lot of people plant Leyland Leyland cypress. Uh, it's a great plant most of the time, but just when you depend on it, the third on the end turns brown and dies because it's native. Its two parents are native to the West Coast in Alaska. That it doesn't like hot, humid summer nights, see? So you need to stick with some real sturdy, dependable, boring old type of plants like native cherry laurel or uh, ligustrum, uh, wax ligustrum, um, 
what's another red tip for tenia? You know, if you'll mix these kind of plants up, they'll do fine. Well, thank you very much. Hope oh, you have a great day. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye bye. All righty, just talking about stuff. You you said you got to say something about the the garden club lady plants. Yeah, I just I have a um I know things are not monolithic, so I just wanted to know what the what, what was the garden lady uh plants and I guess what falls into that category because I'm pretty sure it's a lot of garden ladies will be like yeah these are my garden lady plants you know <laughs> well you know and, and and it's gonna if people who aren't from the south aren't gonna understand what I'm about to say okay <laughs> but if you're from the south you know that old lady plants doesn't mean age or gender it's not an age or a gender old lady plants are the kind of plants that typically people get them from somebody named Aunt Mamie. <laughs> because she got it from somebody named, named you know, it, 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 Garden Club. They swap plants. You know, back before we had fast food plants at all these box stores, mm. you could buy any kind of plant from all over the place. You can go in there now and buy plants from Florida mm-hmm. that won't grow here. But used to be people had to share plants, and they shared plants that were valuable. They were they, they worked, but they're also easy to propagate. And you go to, to any kind of town, you could tell who was in the Garden Club because they all had some of the same plants, because they swapped it among each other. And typically, it wasn't young suburbanites. It was older gardeners, typically garden club ladies. So, um, and Steve Bender from Southern Living, the mm-hmm. grumpy gardener, he and I have laughed. We, came, we wrote a book year, decades ago called Pass Along Plants. Yeah. That everybody grows and nobody buys. We wanted to call it Old Lady Flowers. <laughs> and our publisher said, you can't do that, Felder, if you want to sell it outside the South. Yeah. <laughs> so, again, it's not an age or a gender thing. It's a style. Okay. All right. See, now, now you gave me some good clarity on it. Yes. Yeah. I can imagine some old lady uh, gardeners coming up and they just like, what are these old lady plants? <laughs> yeah. And, and, and they all have different names. I can't tell you how many plants are called Naked Ladies. And and it's any kind of plant that flower comes up without leaves on it. And they call it naked ladies. Surprise lilies, magic lilies, uh, resurrection lilies, whatever. But naked ladies, and that's what the that's what the garden club ladies always call them. And who's your friend going to be down at Wales Fest? Lloyd Moncrief. He's going to have some of those. <laughs> He's got the coolest plants. Uh, you know, he and there's a whole bunch of, you know, this book uh, on past long plants. You can, if, if, if I were to introduce a plant to a neighborhood, that's really showy part of the year. It needs no care, no water, no spray, no pruning. And it blooms really, really good. Somebody's going to say, I wish I had a piece of that. And when they get a piece of it, then there's two of them. Uh, within five or ten years, it's all over the neighborhood. And the whole neighborhood lights up at the same time. Well, you can use those plants to see what the connections are. You know, that six levels of separation, whatever. Plants are the same way. You can tell who got it from who. I like that. I never thought about that. The the, the neighborhood is going to light up at the same time yeah, because it's, they. It's a fabric. Yeah. You know, it's a fabric. That's you know? neat. And, uh, you know, you see a nice old uh, a quilt or something that's got a nice little uh, color stripe running through it through the whole quilt. That's what these plants are. They're the stripes and the spots of a, of a community quilt. Ooh, I need to write that one down. <laughs> uh, I mentioned I'm going to be at um, in um, Petal tomorrow. I'm going to be behind the sports complex. I've got to look it up in, in just a second. Uh, but it's going to be uh, in pedal. I'm going to drive my pickup truck down. It's supporting a community garden, a new community garden down there to help uh, help lo- local folks raise food. And I'm going to bring my truck down there. They're going to have a food truck and all like that. But I'm going to back my truck up, lower, lower the tailgate. I've got all sorts of food planted in the back of it. I'm bringing a container full of lettuces. And mostly it just could be very informal. Bring a chair. You know, and, uh, you know, if you want it, the suggested donation to this community garden is 5 bucks. But come on down. Bring a, bring a chair. It's going to be very informal from 9 o'clock till 12 o'clock. Just going to sit around and talk. I'll hold forth a little bit. But it's just a chance. To, to kick around some ideas with, with somebody not going to try to sell you anything. Uh, also, next Tuesday night, I'm going to be at the Winston County Extension Service in Louisville, 6 o'clock. It's free. 6 o'clock at the Winston County Extension Office. Uh, me and Jim McAdory are going to be talking about gardening. I've got, I'm going to show some pictures. And uh, if, it's, if you want to bring a plant to swap, bring a plant to swap. We'll do that. But that's going to be, again, 6 o'clock Tuesday at the Winston County Extension Office. 
uh, and they're in Louisville, just south of downtown Louisville. We're going to be talking about gardening right up till the end of the hour. And there's and there's a lot of stuff we can talk about. I mentioned lettuces, uh, colorful things, collards, kale. Uh, pansies are starting to come in right now. A little bit hot for planting stuff, but but if you'll keep from overwater, watering without overwatering them, they'll do fine. They'll do just just perfectly fine. And uh, it's almost time to plant garlic. Uh, that's sort of my my uh, heirloom plant of the, of the week. I've got some garlic that came from a friend of mine who got it from somebody who got it from somebody in Pontotoc, Mississippi. So we call it Pontotoc, yeah, Pontotoc garlic. You know, I just stick it in the ground, <clears throat> in some pots, and it grows up like daffodils over the, the wintertime, has nice big softball-sized flowers in the spring, dies down, you dig it up, you got all those big cloves of garlic. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's real, real easy. So uh, anyway, let's go to Greenwood. Slide up to the Delta and talk Hold on. to— we gotta we got to wait for um, oh. William and Greenwood to get, get queued up. But I did have a question, Felder. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I think I've asked you this before, too, but what are some signs that you are overwatering your plant? Because you just said that, you know, if you don't yeah. overwater, it could be okay this time of year. Yeah, that's a good question. And the problem is you don't know until after you've done it. And that's, you know? that's what I was kind of thinking, that yeah. you wouldn't know until it's already done. Now, what happens is people know if you don't water plant, it's roots dry out and the plant wilts. Well, if you keep a plant wet, roots wet, they can't breathe. they got to have both air and water. And so you keep it wet all the time, those roots can't breathe, and they'll, they'll die. They'll rot. They can grow back again. But meanwhile, the top of the plant is saying, what's up with this? See, so uh, the main thing is my rule of thumb for shrubs is I don't ever water shrubs. Aunt Mamie didn't water them. Mama didn't water them. My neighbors, don't, they don't water them around the church. Shrubs really don't need water, but they could use some water about once a month in the summertime. So a couple of times, that'd be great. Not necessary. Uh, lawn needs to be watered. Needs to be watered about once a month. Once a month, every couple of three weeks would be great. More than once a week causes problems. Everybody with the irrigation system, I'm sorry, but that's counterintuitive. Grass doesn't need to be watered more than once a week. Period. And uh, with potted plants, I like to water really, really good, and to let the potting soil, the top of it, get pretty dry so the roots down deep can get air. Water stacks up in a pot. When you, have, when you water a pot really good, there's more water at the bottom than at the top. So I like to water really, really good and let the top part dry out before I soak. And that just comes from experience, and experience comes from killing plants. Yeah, because at the top of the at the top of the soil, especially on a, in a potted plant, it can look extra dry. Yeah. And you're thinking, oh, it needs water, but like you said, the majority of the water is still in the bottom with the roots. Yeah. So it just comes with experience, you know. But the main thing, too much water is often worse than not enough. Really, seriously, seriously. Uh, can we go to Greenwood now and talk to uh, to William? Let's go to Greenwood and talk to William. Hey, William, what's going on this morning? Good morning. Oh, it's kind of cool down here, Felder. We had about a hundred plus here in the Delta, and uh, it's pretty cool this morning. But oh yeah, uh, uh, I'm doing okay. Um, glad you're back from England. Did you enjoy being over there? Well, it was cool. It was cool. It's nice, you know. I'm glad to get back in my garden, though. So, um, yeah. but anyway, you know, everybody's got to be someplace sometime. And it's different over there, different kind of gardening style, different plants. But it's still digging a hole and putting stuff in it green side up. Yeah. I was wondering, have you ever met uh, King Charles? You go to no. the garden? No, I haven't. No, I haven't. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm just a, 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 a garden tourist is all. So, <laughs> anyway, what you got going on with your bulbs? Well, uh, I put them away. I got them on sale back there in about like maybe April, and I put them away in a box. I'm afraid to look at them. I'm afraid they're going to be all turned to dust. I just realized mm. that I've had them stored, you know, for almost like six months. So yeah. they're the alum bulbs, real tall, pretty blue flowers, yep. big head on them. I just wonder, are they going to be all right? Or are they just Don't know. It's like, it's like uh, you know, going to the store, you're buying an onion or buying some garlic, you just squeeze it. If it feels mushy or dry, move on. Yeah. That's all you can do. All you can do is just feel it. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, they forget to plant their bulbs and they think, well, I'll just do it next year. No, it's just like onions and garlic. You know, you put them out on the kitchen counter and after a while they just turn to dust or they rot. So if, yeah. if if it feels good enough to eat, it's good enough to plant. Yeah. It's like this time of year. This is what I went over to your mama's 
house and she gave me a bunch of plants. Yeah. And I always think about your mom. I, I always loved your mom and your daddy. They were so nice to me and she gave me some nice plants. And when I see the plants coming up, like the surprise lily and the, uh, the other thing, I always think about her. But. Okay, it came from, from my mother? Yeah, yeah. Well, she got she got them from her her mother, who stole them from her mother. Her mother in law, well, actually, they all came from my great grand. You know, the old you got a yard full of old lady flowers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you see, she your your grandmama had passed away, and 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 yeah. her and and your daddy were living in the old house. Yeah. So that's where I yeah. went to pick up uh, the plant, plants. Yeah. But, I got a lot of plants yeah. in my yard. That came from my great grandmother. No telling who, who she got them from. But anyway, man, I appreciate your call this morning. Good luck on those bulbs. You still got your chicken from your grandmama? I do. I'm taking my chicken uh, down to Pedal tomorrow in my pickup truck. Granny's chicken goes with it everywhere I, I can take her. I wish I could come see you, but I just can't make it. But, I uh, got you. Have you. a good day, Felder. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for your call. I do appreciate that. Uh, it's a little bit late for fertilizing the grass. It's really late for fertilizing grass. If you don't put a little winterizer out there, you can. But this time of year, people are starting to think about stickers in the spring. What can I do about stickers? Simple. <laughs> this is my broken record. Java, what am I about to say? Get you some flip-flops. <laughs> yep, and raise your mower. Raise <laughs> up your mower. The, more, the thicker your grass goes in the winter, the fewer stickers you're going to have. Uh, I'm going to be in Pedal on Saturday, September 24th. It's going to be at um, uh, behind the sports complex, uh, Hillcrest Loop, and uh, the, the support the Pedal Healing Community Garden. I'm going to have some books with me as well. And Again, Tuesday, September 27th, Louisville, the Winston County Extension Office, 6 o'clock. A lot of fun. Going to whoop it up about gardening in the fall. Bring a plant to swap. Me and Jim McAdory and a bunch of other gardeners going to just have a good time. Uh, let's go. Get to, let's talk to Gary, who's calling from On the Road. Gary, you got problems with your cactus? Uh, I sure do, Felder. Um I, I have my mother's Christmas cactus, and it does has been doing pretty well. And um, I repotted it and set it out back, and the next morning, most of it was gone. And since then, uh, what's left of it uh, has started just, like, dropping limbs off of it. Yeah. Uh, I brought it inside, and it continued to do it, and um, I don't know what's wrong with it. Oh, I don't either. I don't either. Say something ate it the <laughs> first night you said after something came and ate it? Yeah, it was sitting out back on the back porch table, which is open air, you know, yeah. in the backyard. And um, I don't know if a mouse or a, or something got up on there and um, and it could, literally, like, it, cut it, it off. But it, it could very easily have been what we call a, a Norway roof rat. They're real, real common. They're not scary, you know, bad old rat, but they're out there, and these these cacti have got moisture in it. When it's dry, you know that's where a lot of critters get their get their water. So it could it could have been a rodent, more most likely a rodent. Um, as far as the drop in the leaves, most of the time, if the plant is staying wet, you know these are these cacti, Christmas cactus, naturally grow in trees like Spanish moss. They don't, you know, they got roots, but that's not their main point. They get their stuff from rainfall, and if you put them in potting soil and keep them wet, those ro- roots rot. Uh, also, if you let it stay dry, I mean, for mo- for weeks and weeks and weeks, it can have trouble. So when they start dropping their limbs, it's usually watering issues, usually two or three or four weeks ago that caused the problem. And okay. it takes a while for those leaves to seal off and start dropping. You can root them. If they're nice and firm, you can root them. Uh, you can actually cut the plant back, and it'll shock it into sprouting new growth. If you don't prune it, it just sits there. If you prune it, it stimulates new growth. So, you know, you might want to try cutting some of it back a little bit more, rooting those pieces, and seeing if what your root does not sprout back out. All righty. Appreciate that. Thank you, Elder. Okay. This is educated guess. Educated guess. You understand that? <laughs> yes, sir. I'll keep you posted. Okay, Gary. Appreciate it. Okay. Now let's go down to Mobile. Hey, Mikey, how are you this morning? I'm doing well. I'm doing okay. <laughs> good, 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 good. Um, but I, you, you, you're bringing up memories um, of, of uh, the folks that I have known and loved um, with your terms about the old lady flowers. Yeah. Now, well, a dear, a, a dear friend, very dear friend, who was, uh, as quoted in another song, seems just for the man. Yeah. So she knew a lot about um, stuff, including she's the one who introduced me to the, the term um, 
grandma's flower garden quilts, the hexagonal pattern. Yeah. Uh, but uh, um, uh, and uh, her, more importantly, she ended up uh, she referred to herself as so and so's old lady. And uh, um, uh, these these folks became they're from Mobile, but they they became pretty famous. They were international, and they were also you know did some stuff in England. And uh, um, anyway, like I said, she was she was not just his old lady at that point. She was his wife, but I'm sure that according to her, it would still be his old lady. Okay, yeah. that's a yeah. rock and roll term. All right. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I totally get. Know. Like I say, you know, PC. I've got a, a streak of PC in me, but I've also got a streak of just being raised in the South. You know. There you go. <laughs> and uh, J- Java's in there nodding, you know. He he always were. What's Felder going to say? Well, I don't mean anything, you know. But I try I try to hold back on some things. But you know, if somebody <laughs> if somebody were look at my yard, they say, you know, Aunt Mamie, somebody named Aunt Mamie lives there. <laughs> hey, Aunt Mikey here, okay? Aunt, Aunt, Aunt Mikey, that's right. Aunt, Auntie Mikey. Take care. He's, appreciate it. What Java? You you want to say something so bad? No, I I didn't want to say. I, only thing I would say is calm down. Well, of course that goes without saying. <laughs> but we have not really had to clean up anything you say, Felder. You know, it's amazing because you know I've got a <laughs> as you know I've got a sailor's mouth because I was a sailor. But uh, anyway, we're just trying to have a good time talking about gardening. As a matter of fact, talking about that, let's go to. Um, I can't tell whether it's Gene or Roger. Uh, it's Gene. Gene from Summerall. Gene, what's up? Good morning. Hey, good morning. Uh, can you hear me okay? Sure. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I'm a sailor as well. <laughs> so you you, um, you you understand. I do understand. So it's uh, challenging sometimes uh, when I'm gone to work, you know, to uh, try to get some cooperation and get in my garden to be as healthy as possible. <laughs> yep. Uh so uh, my question is, I've got a friend in Louisiana, uh, and I realize Louisiana is a completely different environment there. Uh, not, not, you know, they, not, not, not that much. Not, I'm giving a talk. Uh, uh, in a, uh, a, a matter of fact, a week from today, I'm giving a talk down in Louisiana. It's pretty much the same. And the plants changed a little bit, but it's still digging a hole in the ground. Yeah. Well, I've got a buddy, and he's got an entire grove of uh, banana trees uh and he, he gets a good six to eight, uh, um, whatever you call them, clumps of bananas out of his his grove every year. And those things are huge. And yeah. so I got some cuttings from him, and I planted them uh, on my property. And they're growing. But, man, they're growing slow. And, you know, when the winter hits, you know, they just die back to almost nothing. And then they start over again in the spring. So, I don't know. Do you know how many years it takes, uh, on average, to get them to where they're actually going to fruit and and produce something? Yeah, because yeah, when you get a piece of a off a base of a banana tree, you know, a little little pup off of it, it can make bananas in about a year and a half. And here's the problem: it takes about. 18, 20 months, and it, it depends on variety. Some are real fast, some are not. But in general, it takes over a year for when it sprouts to when you have uh, bananas you can harvest. And the problem is here in, in most of the South, it freezes in winter, they die down the ground, and they have to start over again. Unless you can protect maybe a foot and a half or two feet of the lower trunk by cutting them back, piling up the leaves, if you can keep just a little bit of this year's growth uh, from from freezing to the ground, what sprouts out next year will probably have time to make bananas. So the the question takes a year and a half or so, and you have to protect it at least part of it over the winter time. Okay, well, how would I do that? Could I uh, pile up like uh, pine straw around it or something like that? Uh, yeah, well, not p- pine straw really isn't that good an insulator. You you want something that's going to have you know the, the better insulating. You know, you wouldn't want to put a little thin shawl on your shoulders if you got a good quilt. Uh, so what I would do is I would cut it uh, down, put some chicken wire or something like that around, it and fill it up with tree leaves. Tree leaves. Okay. Yeah. All right, that sounds good. Yeah, because like you said, they start over every year, and I never do get them big enough where they'll actually produce fruit. Yeah, they have to reset. But again, if you could protect, you know, just even a foot and a half or so of the trunk, that gives enough head start. 
Okay, and one last question. I've heard that once they produce fruit that you need to cut them down because they'll never produce fruit again. It's the younger ones that will then take over and produce fruit after that. You know, as, as much as I've known about bananas, and I've, tra- I've worked with bananas in, in tropics from South Asia to Africa, South America, Hawaii, all over the place, I don't know the answer to that. I don't know. I don't know. It's a good question. But it doesn't matter because, you know, whether, whether they do or not, they've always got new plants coming on anyway. But that's a good question. Yeah. I don't know if, they, if they'll produce a second crop on one stalk. I bet they don't. Gut feeling. Okay. Well, I appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. You bet. Thanks for your call, Gene. Appreciate it. Okay, now let's go to Roger in Florence. Roger, we're about to run out of time. What, we get, what can I help you with real quick? Are you there? Yep, but we're almost out of time. What can I help you with? Okay, quick. I just want to mention the word gleaning. Gleaning. A lot of people don't know what gleaning is. And I'm on my way to Hope, Mississippi. There's a kind farmer up there who has, oh, gosh, thousands of pounds of sweet potatoes. And my friend Leonard Blanton and I are headed up there with two pickup trucks. We're going to bring back all we can. And And share, and share, share with those who don't have. I appreciate it. Oh, gosh. Sorry. Sorry, Roger. Got to go. Got to go. Matter of fact, I got to go to the dermatologist and have a little thing cut off the end of my nose. Java, wear some sunscreen. A lot of our listeners understand what I'm saying. It's not that serious, but it could be. Wear sunscreen. (laughs) I'm Horticulture's Fellow Rushing. Hope to see some of y'all at the sports complex in, in Petal, Mississippi tomorrow. Hope to see some of y'all in Louisville at the Extension Service Office Tuesday evening. Hope y'all have a great week. Okay, go to a farmer's market. Take a kid with you. Show them how to do what we do best. Plant some pansies. Let them get dirty. We really need that. See y'all next week. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on.